Carlos Jimenez. Carlos is currently works at the U.S. Soccer Federation as the head physical therapist for the women's national team. Not a bad team to work for. Originally from Caracas, Venezuela, Carlos uh, enrolled at the Miami's Florida International University and earned his bachelor's in health science and a doctorate of physical therapy. He has worked for the Venezuela's men's U-20 soccer team, as well as soccer teams in Poland. Welcome, Carlos. Hi, my name is Carlos Jimenez, and today I would like to share with you guys a rehab continuum for hamstring injuries. And I'm currently working as the physical therapist for the U.S. Women National Soccer Team. Before moving on, I wanted to uh, this, uh, put this disclaimer up there that informs you that the views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this presentation belong uh, to me and not necessarily to the U.S. Soccer Federation at all. The objectives of this presentation is to give you context at the national team level, introduce you to the multidisciplinary team and the communication within our team, give you a framework to treat an acute hamstring injury, and just to share a few final thoughts in my rehab philosophy. So I'm lucky to be able to work with great uh, like-minded people, and we are lucky to have a couple of MDs and orthopedic doctors that will travel with us during the camps. Also working with uh, Steve Stricker, the head athletic trainer, and then uh, the head sports scientist, Ellie Maybury, and Julian Hyde. And then we have a few volunteers that travel with us and supporting uh, the team during these trips. So working at the national team level with the US women's soccer team, uh, we have a unique um, scenario here because we have to be proactive and have an intimate relationship with reactivity because anything can happen and we have limited time working with these players. Uh, then also we have reduced hours of work with these players and ultimately they're only with us for a few couple weeks and they go back to their clubs and that we have to do the best we can while they're with us. Before I move on, I wanted to touch bases first with the communication and relationship within a team. I feel like if this line of communication from doctor, athletic trainer, PT, sports scientist, and going back and forth, it's healthy, then the success of your rehab plan and any other problem will be solved just because this communication right here is, is key. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about your multidisciplinary team and the communication with the team. I wanted to put reference on a, this research that was done in Europe and they asked a simple question to their uh, clubs, top club, elite clubs in that region, basically asking them what was the relationship and communication style within their teams, within their sports med, sports scientists and coaching staff. And they were ready from one to five. And they were they saw this relationship that those teams that had good real communication styles within their staff was able to show less injuries incidents throughout the year. So this brings to my attention that you know you can have the best framework uh, for returning to sports or uh, returning to play, but if you don't have a good team to work with and if the communication is broken, then definitely nothing is going to get done and everything's going to fall in the cracks. In this slide, I just want to bring up to your attention that I'm always thinking in this process and every part, every part of the team should be thinking of tissue healing, time before the next game, if the athlete can be replaced for another player, what kind of rehab strategies we going to use, um, what exercise can they tolerate, what about the injury history? The if they can train with a team, if they're a key player, all of these things are gonna make a difference when you're taking a decision when the athlete can go back to their uh, team and play eventually. So we know that we're gonna be looking at the research, and we're gonna tie these to past experience. 
Um, so we know that already this issue was uh, related to or confirmed with an ultrasound that it was a grade one uh, soft tissue injury, then we feel confident that this injury won't take the athlete too long to go back on the field. And we should never forget about how the athlete feels about this injury. Because if they have any doubts in their head that this injury is worse than we think, we need to reassure the athlete that uh, gives an input in the injury. Um, so we have to make sure that the athletes are confident with our approach and that the athlete already has a buy-in in our treatment approach and rehab approach. Next, once we finish with this part right here, where we're communicating well, we are all taking in, into consideration this part right here. We always taking this into consideration and then we move up to the athlete's view. Now we're looking into, is the athlete ready to return to practice? Yes. If yes, so we're going to be looking at different clinical presentations. Um, we're going to look at the acute chronic ratio, if you have it. We look at the northward strength. If they are able to have a high speed, uh, more than seventy percent, and then limited training. These are the things that we're looking at to return the athlete to practice. So I've used this rehab update continuum, and it's basically a quick clinical assessment uh, for the clinician that they can use to kind of assess how severe the injury was with clinical uh, objective data. So if you see the athlete with pain with walking, how much tender to palpation they had, was the strength of the hamstring muscle at 15, 30 degrees of knee flexion. Then you also want to look at the manual uh, maximal supine after knee extension, comparing left and right. And then you look at single leg bridges, long lever, and if they can do a lot of reps to look for more endurance. Since we know in this case, he, she or he was a grade one, uh, strain, we know that they might only have a couple of these that might uh, appear during our clinical presentation. So this athlete is going to be able to go from here all the way down here. Meaning, this athlete is going to start with some type of ASCLIN rehab program, some eccentrics as soon as they can, but then also some submaximal isometric exercises to start working on that tissue and pain tolerance. Once the athlete jumps down here to phase two, then we can think of more uh, sports-specific rehab within tolerance, and then we can add some of the Mendiguccia type of protocol to help the athlete have a standard um, rehab progression. Then, as they progress, they're going to go to a phase three uh, progression, meaning they're going to use heavy, high level of isometric, movement-based rehab, medium to high plyos, high level eccentric emphasis, and then obviously sports specific and retest again. Um, we're also going to use some of Matt Tavern's uh, control to chaos to kind of like have a more objective uh, criteria to move on to the next phase. When you see an objective data to measure the strength of the athlete, uh, if you're using normal strength, hopefully you have historical data that you can track and see where the athlete falls. Because it's very variable. Some athletes might be asymmetric, but they might be any, a normal asymmetry for the athlete. But then also you want to look at it as a whiskers box plot and you will see where they're falling within their team and maybe it might be useful to use these two graphs to have an idea how to rehab the athlete and when to be feel confident that the athlete will be ready to tolerate the load on the field. So I wanted to show you the guys this graph uh, from Tim Gavitt and using the acute chronic uh, workload, basically he, what I've used in the past, if you already know, if you have enough information from your athlete and you know that they're 100% from the past week, you know, they're loading. So if they've been off for like about five or seven days and they missed a few sessions, you know that the load will not be the same as they was before they were um, injured. So taking th this into consideration will make 
your rehab a little more objective and return to play easier. When we are progressing towards more sport specific and looking at a limited training session, I've always looked at what can the athlete do as a part of the conditioning aspect and also looking if they're going to use the ball on the ball. In this case, if you have an athlete with a strain one in this hypothetical case, I've used a combination of this with the sports scientists. You always make sure that they're okay with this as well. And then change the direction with or without the ball. And you're looking at some acceleration and deceleration preparation. You can use progression of technical skills if you use a ball or no ball. But these are look good, really easy par parameters to use to be able to track how the athlete is checking some boxes and if they're ready to move on to the next stage of rehab. Now that the athlete has been able to return to practice after making sure the athlete was able to tolerate practices, then we're ready to move up to the next part. So we're almost ready here. Um, once the athlete is able to return to practice, we're gonna be able to get them back to return to play phase. Now, we're still looking at the clinical presentation, acute current ratio, uh, normal strength, as we, spo we spoke earlier. The high speed running should be hitting about 90%, and then axial to this cell intensity should be increased, and the training of this session should be fill positional specific. So this is something that you should be working closely with your sports scientists in the future, and I feel like as these are markers that are the heating and all of this is being taken care of, then the athlete is on a good uh, path to return to play. Here we can see how we're using this for return to play. Basically using a con speed as geometric, also using the running speed more than 90%, and you using other metrics, acceleration, deceleration, but we want this more positional. So basically the athlete is able to train with the team and being used in their position and being able to tolerate that demand hopefully in the session so we feel confident to be able to let the athlete play in the next game and here i wanted to share with you guys uh, a few final thoughts i want to say that um, rehab is an art because it's about managing a situation with what science is actually telling us also we need to keep in mind that uh, I do not think that one exercise fits all and also injuries aren't treated in reality, they are managed. And um, a couple of things that I want to share is that empathy is key, but you must guide yourself with rational thoughts, not your heart, otherwise you will make a mistake. And to finish, you should guide your athlete with recommendations as well as confidence, but we do not have a magic wand. In conclusion, I was able to show you guys how we work at the national team level.